The Voyeurs, opens with a young couple, Pippa and Thomas, who are excited since they've just moved into their first apartment together in Montreal. They sign the lease agreement and finalize the deal. That night, the couple discuss their relationship and Pippa asks Thomas if they can have kids, which gets Thomas worried, until she mentions that she wants them at least four years in the future. Relieved that she doesn't want kids early, Thomas is happy to accept her proposal to have some years later. They soon realize that their windows look directly into the apartment across the street, where a man with a professional studio is taking photographs of a woman. Pippa and Thomas watch with excitement as the couple moves to have a reproduction session with their curtains fully open. Thomas continues to watch at first, but stops at Pippa's insistence and they move away to give their neighbors some privacy. They jokingly give their neighbors pseudonames, Margo and Brent. That night, Pippa dresses and gets ready to have some of what their neighbors were having, but Thomas falls asleep early and leaves her sexually frustrated. Pippa, who works as a trainee optometrist at Loptique, receives a bird feeder from her boss as a housewarming gift. While walking home, Pippa sees a pair of binoculars on a shelf in a store and decides to buy them, so she and Thomas can watch the couple. They often see Brent having sex with several models while Margot is out. Pippa takes the initiative to reenact what her neighbor is doing with the slutty model while using the binoculars, together with Thomas. Unfortunately Thomas fails to keep up and prematurely finishes, which frustrates Pippa. The next day, Pippa and Thomas have lunch with Pippa's co-worker and friend Ari, and Thomas' sister, Joni. They discuss their neighbors and whether Brent was cheating on Margot or whether the couple are in an open relationship or swingers. Pippa expresses interest in knowing what the neighbors are saying, eventually learning from Joni that Thomas knows a way to listen in on another room with a laser pointer, the process requires a reflective surface to send the laser beam back to them. Which means they have to sneak into their neighbor's apartment and place a mirror pointed towards their own apartment's window. When Brent and Margot throw a Halloween costume party in their apartment, Pippa and Thomas sneak in by posing as guests. They blend in with the crowd and Pippa plants a small mirror in the apartment, later allowing her and Thomas to listen in on their conversations. They are unsettled to hear Margot confronting Brent about his adultery. Brent assaults Margot, breaking her glasses and convinces her that her suspicions are unfounded and that she is just looking for an excuse for them to break their marriage. The next day, Margot, who we learn her real name is Julia, visits Loptique where she receives an eye exam from Pippa and orders a new set of stylish glasses recommended by her. Before she leaves, Julia invites Pippa to hang out for a cup of coffee sometime. Pippa comes back home and tells Thomas the news and says she wants to warn Julia about Brent's adultery, but Thomas insists that she stop interfering with the neighbors as it's none of her business. Later, Pippa and Julia meet at a spa. Julia reveals that her husband is named Sebastian, or Seb for short, and is a well-known photographer. She also suggests that she introduce her to him at some point. Pippa gets obsessed with Seb and continue to spy on him in secret from Thomas. She observes him have a threesome and throwing the used condom away afterwards. Even during the night, she sneaks out of her bed to see if her neighbor is up. She later discovers how to access Julia and Seb's wireless printer, which she uses to anonymously expose Seb's infidelities to Julia, mentioning the condom as proof. Thomas angrily confronts Pippa about being so invested in Julia and Seb's lives. Thomas and Pippa watch as Julia picks up a knife and fear they're about to witness a murder, but Julia backs away at the last second. Frustrated with Pippa, Thomas takes her binoculars and smashes them in the ground. The next morning, Pippa apologizes to Thomas and promises to stop watching the neighbors. However, they then see Seb discovering Julia's body in the bathroom, after she seemingly slit her own throat. Thomas angrily blames Pippa for Julia's death, since she was so obsessed with their neighbor's relationship, she wouldn't listen to anything he says. He breaks up with her and leaves. Months pass by and although heartbroken, Pippa continues to watch Seb and imagine herself comforting the beautiful cheating prick. Then one evening, she decides to follow him to a nearby bar. Seb notices Pippa and goes to sit by her and they talk about masturbation, and how Seb finds it weird that it's normalized for couples in a relationship to do it, like use a vibrator, but when that person sleeps with someone else, it's deemed unacceptable for some reason. He then asks her to let him photograph her at his apartment, which she accepts. As they walk back to his place, Seb picks up his keys just outside the door. As they begin the photograph session, Seb, the chick magnet that he is, manages to convince Pippa to strip naked and pose nude for him, and they eventually have the long-awaited sexy time that Pippa imagined for so long. At the same time, 
Unlucky Thomas returns to the apartment to apologize. He consumes a drink left in the refrigerator and pours some of it into the bird feeder. He then takes the binoculars and sees Pippa riding Seb in utter pleasure across the street. The next morning, Pippa returns home to an open door, only to find Thomas dead in their apartment, having apparently hanged himself after seeing Pippa cuck him. Time passes and Pippa confesses to Ari about everything that happened. Ari reassures her that none of it is her fault, as she was dumped and didn't know what would happen. The girls then decide to go to Seb's exhibition, which turns out to be a collaboration with Julia, whose death was staged and she is still alive. Pippa and Thomas are revealed to be the subjects of the exhibition. They show the naked picture Seb took of Pippa during her stay in his apartment. They then divulge that they own the apartment rented by Pippa and Thomas, whose lease included a clause stating that they consented to be photographed, and that Seb and Julia knew they were being watched, while watching them back. They knew about the planted microphone and the suicide of Thomas, which were all photographed and shown in the exhibit. Distressed, Pippa storms off in tears. She goes back to Seb's apartment, which she breaks in after remembering where Seb stashes his key outside, and notice a hidden studio in the attic which contains all the photographs her neighbors have taken. Pippa smashes and destroys the place and then decides to move out of the apartment. She takes the bird feeder when she notices the dead birds on a grate just below, just as she looks to see Julia's sly smile across the street. Seb and Julia give an interview after their exhibition, explaining that reading the terms and conditions, or in this case, the lease agreement, is the tenant's responsibility. While Julia seems quite happy with what they've done, Seb looks visibly upset and guilty with how the situation turned out. Throughout the interview, it is revealed that Seb and Julia have made a lot of money and their little voyeur show turned into a worldwide success, as people all over the world are interested in the story. Seb and Julia return home to find a congratulatory bottle of wine by their door. As they drink the wine, Pippa sends a message to their printer saying she knows Thomas didn't commit suicide and that they killed him. They spot her on the roof and chase after her. After Pippa leads Seb and Julia into La Petite, Pippa deduces that while she was getting it on with Seb, Julia poisoned Thomas's drink and staged his suicide, because of all the dead birds she saw that drank the same liquid. Pippa also reveals that she spiked their wine, causing Julia and Seb to faint moments later. Pippa places her two unconscious neighbors under a LASIK machine, using it to burn their corneas. Some time later, a new couple have moved into Pippa and Thomas's former apartment. They notice they can see everything in the neighbor's apartment across the street. We then see Seb and Julia, both of whom are now blind. Pippa watches Seb and Julia from the rooftop, before leaving her binoculars behind, having exacted revenge for what they've done to her and Thomas.